Hey, it's Francis Lamb, host of The Splendid Table. Join us for a special live taping of our show where I'll be talking to some of Orange County's culinary stars. It's February 4th at South Coast Rep. Tickets at laist.com slash events. Can't wait to see you. LAist Studios. This is How to LA from LA Studios, the podcast that helps you navigate this city, including your health. I'm your host, Brian De Los Santos. Today, what you need to know about the current state of COVID-19 in LA County and a new state public health order that experts say significantly loosens the guidelines around how long people with COVID should isolate. Here to talk about how we can best protect ourselves is LA's senior health reporter, Jackie Fortier. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Brian. First, I want to note that it has been four years since the first case of COVID was diagnosed in Washington State. Wow. Yeah, it has been quite a four years, and I never thought I would live through a public health and and a pandemic emergency like this. Yeah, all of us, you know, hit all of us, and we're now talking about it still, you know, four years later, and we got to check in on what's going on now. Let's talk about the current COVID picture in L.A. County. We're actually recording this on Friday, January 26th, and the latest numbers were posted the day before. What were the trends for this winter? Well, we've seen cases and hospitalizations go up since late November, so we've seen a winter surge, and we're still in it. We've hit a high plateau right now. Hospitalizations and deaths are very slightly down compared to the week before last. But the amount of COVID in our wastewater, which is our best indicator of where we are, is at 67% of last winter's peak, which is almost the same as the week before. So that's why I say we've hit a high plateau. There's still a lot of COVID transmission going on. I do want to bring up the death toll from COVID. I know you reported a couple of weeks ago that deaths had increased. Yeah, unfortunately, it's about the same. About five people every day die from COVID in L.A. County. That hasn't changed. I also have to bring up the flu because it can be fatal as well. Um, Is that something the public health system also reports out? Yeah, flu is a reportable disease. Uh, They do it more by flu-like symptoms because they don't necessarily test a lot of people. But uh, there's a national flu view. You're absolutely right. The flu kills people every year. In L.A. County, the flu has killed 49 adults and one child since October 1st in L.A. County juxtapose that with COVID, which right now is killing five people every day. Yeah, no, those numbers are still scary, even if they're not as we experienced them in 2020. I've heard and read that there's a tough strain of COVID going around that's led to increased cases. What's going on here? Yeah, so JN1 makes up the majority of cases in the U.S. and in L.A. County. It's becoming the dominant uh, Omicron subvariant worldwide. But there's not just one subvariant of Omicron, you know, going around. If we back up, the Greek letter idea was great for simplifying things. But we started with four lineages that were called Omicron, and they were all Mm -hmm. slightly different. Each of those has continued to circulate and accumulate uh, mutations. So in the past, when one variant has emerged, it became dominant. Uh, If you remember, you know, Delta just swooped in and a lot of people got sick. We haven't really had this situation with SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes COVID, uh, where we had four lineages starting off, each of which is now you know, mutated into sublineages. They're all around at low levels. If you look at a graph of all of the sublineages that are circulating in LA County that the health department tracks, you'll see a small percentage of each one of them making up cases. So you can get sick from other sublineages of Omicron that aren't JN1. And as we know, there's a lot of respiratory illnesses going around. I got sick the first week of January, and it felt like a weird cold, mostly a sore throat, and I did not test positive for COVID. I feel like I've heard the same from a lot of people just around me and on social media. What can you tell us about the different viruses that are being reported here in L.A. County? Well, we are in the winter respiratory, you know, viral season. So there's the colds, there's flu, there's COVID, there's RSV. Those are just the main viruses. I mean, there's bacteria that can get you sick. There's fungal infections that can get you sick. Um, Looking at LA County's numbers, our RSV has decreased. 
our flu is on the way down. However, flu behaves a little differently. Mm -hmm. Flu A uh, tends to peak in January usually, and then we get a little bit of a trough and then flu B comes up. So we'll see more flu cases probably later on in the season. Uh, and then, of course, there's COVID, but COVID makes up the majority of the hospitalizations. Yeah, people got to be careful out there. There's a lot swirling around in the air. As far as COVID tests go, what's the word on reliability right now and the recommendation on what to do if you do get sick? I'm just thinking about how a lot of people might be testing with kits that have been in their bathroom for a while. Yeah, you can actually take your test kit and then uh, look up a list from either the CDC or from the California Department of Public Health. They both have their own uh, websites. And you can check and see if your test kit is uh, still viable. So there's a, a little code on it that you can just check against that list. That's a good piece of advice. I will make sure to do that when I get home. And we got to talk about prevention. The last time we checked in with you back in October, we were talking about the updated vaccine and the flu shot. Is it too late in the season for people to get one or both if they haven't already? No, it's not too late. Flu tends to peak again later in the year. So getting a flu shot if you haven't is a good idea, especially if you're over the age of 55. Young children uh, should also get their flu and COVID shots. I was talking to a local pediatrician uh, and he told me he can immediately tell when he sees a patient if they've had a flu shot or not. People who get the flu who aren't vaccinated get much sicker. They can be hospitalized and unfortunately, some die, but small children especially can get really sick with the flu. The COVID shot is still a good idea for everyone. Uh, the kind of nice part, if you will, uh, about all of the sublineages being related to Omicron is that the shot that came out last fall, and there is only one COVID shot, uh, still gives you some protection against any of the, the subvariants that are circulating. Coming up, we'll go over the latest rules for the workplace and elsewhere for those who test positive for COVID. Hey, it's Francis Lamb, host of The Splendid Table. Our show is all about the intersection of food and life, and we're heading to Southern California. Elias is hosting a special live taping of our show in Orange County, where we'll have a chance to talk to some of the stars of the OC's vibrant food scene. And after the show, we'll all get a bite of something delicious to eat. So join us February 4th at South Coast Rep. Get your tickets now at elliest.com slash events. Thanks for listening to another great podcast from LAist Studios. I'm Suzanne Watley. And since you obviously like hearing stories that help you engage more with your world, join me every weekday for NPR's Morning Edition. Starting at 5 a.m., we get you the day's breaking news stories, local, national, and worldwide, and give you a little joy and delight to start your day right. Morning Edition, weekdays from 5 until 9 on the radio at LAist 89.3 and on the LAist app. And we're back with LA senior health reporter, Jackie Fortier. All right, I kind of want to level set on where we are with the state and local policies because things have changed. There was a recent loosening of state guidelines around the isolation periods, the length of time COVID positive people are advised to stay away from others. What happened here? Yeah, so California health officials updated the state's official guidelines, like you said, on how long people with COVID-19 should isolate from others, and they have new recommendations. So up until now, the CDC has recommended that people who test positive for COVID-19 stay home and away from other people for at least five days, whether or not they have symptoms. Mm -hmm. But on January 9th, the California Department of Public Health issued an update that their official recommendations for Californians would move away from that five-day rule in favor of focusing on, in their words, clinical symptoms to determine when to end isolation. By the way, what's the definition of clinical symptoms? So the new guidance for COVID-positive Californians who have symptoms is to stay home until your symptoms improve and any fever has been gone 24 hours without a fever-reducing medication and to wear a mask indoors around others for 10 days and avoid higher risk people for 10 days. The biggest change in CDPH's guidance is if you test positive for COVID but don't have symptoms, you should now wear a mask indoors around others for 10 days 
and avoid higher risk people for 10 days, but you no longer need to isolate. And CDPH's new guidance advises that even if you have no symptoms, you are still potentially infectious with COVID two days before you get a positive test. So you may still be infectious. And this was also adopted by Cal OSHA for the rules in the work, most workplaces around the state. So the CDC still says that COVID positive people should stay home a full five days, whether they have symptoms or not. But now CDPH says that symptom free people with COVID can leave their homes as long as they you know, follow the guidance above, which is wearing a mask. It just sounds a little confusing. It is kind of confusing, but Mm -hmm. I think the big difference is that the CDC is not a rulemaking agency. Those are the recommendations. Whereas because this has been adopted by Cal OSHA, the California rules are the California rules for most workplaces. That makes sense. Now, do we know why this recent change happened? The California Department of Public Health is is pretty firm that for California, the time has come to make this change. Uh, they said in their press release that previous isolation recommendations were implemented to reduce the spread of the virus um, when the population had little immunity and led to large numbers of people being hospitalized, uh, dying, and of course, overwhelming the healthcare systems. We all remember that. They say we're now at a different point in time with reduced impacts from COVID-19 compared to prior years and that people have broad immunity either from vaccination and or natural infection. And we also have uh, readily available treatments and antivirals for infected people. And I'm assuming L.A. County is following these state guidelines. Yes, L.A. County's rules are the same as the state's. Which kind of makes sense because I was on our website yesterday and I saw this headline, LAUSD colon COVID positive students and staff can come to school masked. And I was like, what? Yeah. So LAUSD adopted and they're one of many school districts. I think Oakland was the first uh, to adopt the same uh, guidelines that were adopted by uh, Cal OSHA and came out of CDPH that we just talked about. So students and staff in LAUSD who test positive for COVID but don't have symptoms are no longer required to stay home, but they will have to wear a mask at school for at least 10 days. And we have talked about masking quite a lot with you. What are the masking policies nowadays? It kind of depends on where you are. First of all, anyone can mask if they want to. An employee Mm -hmm. can't be ordered to take a mask off in California. Uh, That's a state law. That's actually not true in most states. Interesting. If you're a healthcare worker in L.A. County, you have to mask in patient areas for the time being because we had such high hospitalizations that will stay in place for probably another couple weeks. Uh, it, that varies based on county to county, though. But because in L.A. County, our hospitalizations were so high, they ordered um, healthcare workers to wear masks. Yeah, I feel like every time I visited like physical therapy or any of the clinics, I would just mask because I felt like that was the requirement. And they also provide masks at the clinic. So um, just to, to note that. Well, and the reason for that is that a lot of people who are immunocompromised or elderly are seeking care at healthcare facilities, mm-hmm. right? And of course, there's a lot of people who are there who may be infected uh, with COVID uh, and don't know it. That's why they're there to get treatment. Mm-hmm. So the, the purpose in masking in healthcare facilities is to try to keep people who are very vulnerable. You have to go to the doctor um, to keep them from getting sick in that in that space. Yeah, it's part of being good to your own communities. In closing, COVID is still spreading. Uh, There's the flu and other respiratory illnesses that we talked about. What should people be most mindful of just to kind of stay healthy right now? For me, I think it it kind of depends on your situation. I mean, yes, there's a lot of viral transmission going on right now. If you're around a lot of other people, you know, if you're going to an airport or something like that, I would definitely mask up and wear, you know, an N95 because, you know, who wants to get sick? And Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll keep you from getting the cold, too. So that's the nice part. The difference now between, you know, even just a couple years ago is we have these really good antivirals if you do contract COVID. And people 12 and older, most of them can use these antivirals. They're actually being under-prescribed. There was a recent study out that found that a lot of doctors don't prescribe Paxlovid as much as they uh, could. Initially, there was a lot of branding that Paxlovid was really only for people who were uh, immune suppressed or compromised. And that's not the case. Um, So if you do test positive for COVID, you know, get in touch with your doctor and see if you can 
take an antiviral. There is others other than Paxlovid. It'll make you feel better. And it also decreases the likelihood of developing long COVID, which is really important. Well, Jackie, thanks so much for joining me today. And hopefully in four years, we're not talking about COVID in this matter. I certainly hope so. Thank you. Thank you. That's Jackie Fortier, Senior Health Reporter for LAS. All right, folks, that is it for us today. Stay healthy out there and join us tomorrow. We're going to head over to Lamert Park and Wes Adams to learn about the music scene, past and present. And who knows, you might discover a new place to pick up some vinyl. This episode was produced by Monica Bushman. Our Hot to LA team also includes Erica Washington, Evan Jacoby, Manga Botel, and Victoria Alejandro. Our intern is Tony Morales. Our engineer for this episode was Donald Paz. Support for this podcast is made possible by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe that quality journalism makes Los Angeles a better place to live. <laughs>